Hi, my name is Brian Sager, and along with Ip Korkendorf and Peter Vesper, we work at the Synth Facility at DTU Physics. At the Synth Facility, we focus on heterogeneous catalysis, electrocatalysis, and photocatalysis. A big part of a lot of the work we do is related to hydrogen evolution catalysis. So in this perspective, we decided to, to give our take on the hydrogen evolution uh, catalysis and why we, we do this reaction. And the thing that makes this perspective a little different than others is we really go into a, a lot of the why we do this catalysis just as much as we do the actual science behind it. And one of the important things we, we talk about is using uh, hydrogen evolution and electrolysis basically as an energy storage source for intermittent renewable energy sources, such as wind and solar. And here in Denmark, that is especially important to us because we have a situation at certain times where we actually produce more uh, electricity via wind and solar than we consume. So we have this excess energy which we need to store somehow. And electrolysis is one potential way to do that. However, to do electrolysis efficiently, we also need to make sure it's uh, economically viable, so therefore we need to have cheap materials to do this with. Now that leads to one of the problems with hydrogen evolution. Currently, people use platinum for hydrogen evolution because it is an extremely excellent catalyst. However, there is not that much platinum produced worldwide, and if we want to scale up an electrolysis uh, system to basically be on the scale of a natural energy grid, we would need to use an extremely large amount of platinum, and that probably would not be economically viable. We do go into this perspective actually looking at that and seeing how close of, of, of an economic issue it is. Obviously, the much better way would be to find an extremely cheap catalyst so we wouldn't have to worry about that. So in this perspective, we talk about basically cheap hydrogen evolution catalysts. And this has been working, worked on seriously for about 10 years now. It originally started around 2005 when computational chemists discovered that MOS2 actually had certain phases that were quite active. And as our chart plots the, uh, the years versus the, the overpotential, people working on MOS2 have been able to reduce that overpotential slowly over time to the point now where it is quite low after about 10 years. At the same time while we're working on these molybdenum sulfides, People have also been working on other materials, such as molybdenum borides, and molybdenum carbides, and a couple other materials. The really interesting uh, material that has recently came up is the phosphides. There's been a nickel phosphide, cobalt phosphide, molybdenum phosphide, and tungsten phosphide. All are extremely efficient, with some of them being even more efficient than molybdenum sulfide. Now these are getting so low in, uh, in overpotential that they are reaching pretty close to where platinum's overpotential is on a per uh, geometric uh, area basis. So what this is telling us when we compare this to platinum is there's very little improvement we can actually make in the hydrogen evolution because platinum in itself is an extremely good catalyst. So we are very, very close to the thermodynamic limit. Now. Throughout this perspective, we, we kind of go and show the progression over the last 10 years and how we've got to this point. But even though we're at this point with, with really nice hydrogen evolution catalysts, we still do need to worry about the oxygen evolution side of electrolysis. And that right now is the major stumbling block towards producing efficient, cheap uh, electrolysis.